Hello there and welcome back. This is still Hello Nigeria. Great interview right there with Felicia and Riz Bona and Olive Emodi speaking about photography and when couples come together to do great and fantastic work. Now, we talk about couples doing work, but it's even more fascinating when one person decides to take on a cause and defies all odds to bring it to pass. She uses her platform to ensure that women who are otherwise marginalized in society have a chance at living a, a life that is worth living. Ladies and gentlemen, we talked about her earlier on and now we have her live on set. Please make very welcome TV presenter, multimedia personality, award-winning me media personality, and now social good doer or do good. <laughs> Please advocate. make very welcome <laughs> Bolanle Olukani. Hi, Hello, Bolanle. Thank, thank you. you. It's great to, to have you. It's so nice to be here. This is so cool. I love going on other people's shows and see how things <laughs> how work. How does it feel being on the other side? Because you're used to asking the questions. Yeah, you know, I was about to be like, how are you guys doing? So what's <laughs> You know, I'm always like ready, but I'm taking it, I'm enjoying it. I've done a good amount of interviews doing the press tour for God's Wives, and I'm like, I'm kind of enjoying this side. <laughs> I might just quit my job. Just joking. No, just joking, definitely. <laughs> All right, so well, Ali, today's Woman Wednesday, yeah. and you are our Woman Wednesday, and very soon, oh, people so out cool. there, in case you haven't even already heard about it, you would understand why we chose her today as our Woman Thank Wednesday. You. But first of all, let's go down memory lane. Yeah. Growing up, you have a very fascinating childhood. <laughs> Everyone talks about you being you know, raised in four different countries. Yeah. Could you tell us about that? And has that impacted the way you live your life today or think today? Most definitely. So um, my dad worked for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and he's a diplomat. Well, he was, he's retired now. And you know, I lived in Israel, Kenya, and of course, Nigeria. And then I did my university in America. And it was interesting because I always went to school with people from other countries. So I didn't understand like what it meant for someone to be, we for us to all be from the same country. So, you know, my friends were from Russia, Slovakia, <laughs> China. And then also, it also made me have to learn how to make new friends really quickly because a lot of us would not stay for long. So maybe um, someone came one year, the next year they could be gone. So I, it also made me not very like attached yeah. to people, but it also made me cherish a lot of my friendships. Um, but most importantly, it made me very curious. And which is why, you know, I started, I decided to become a presenter is because I'm interested in other people. I'm interested in finding out how, how other people's brains work. And it also allows me to really connect with people easily. Um, just because, you know, I learned how to make friends easily. So, yeah, it was an amazing childhood. I think doing primary school in Israel was very strange. Um, my house had a bomb shelter. So that was kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you think about all these things, you're like, in hindsight, like, I remember, like, having to evacuate school because there was a bomb threat. You know those kind of things where you're like, mm, as a nine-year-old, but we still like go play, and, and it was not a big deal. But I had a great childhood. Um, living in Kenya really influenced my decision to become a presenter. I remember I became, I fell in love with radio there. The radio there is amazing, mm -hmm. really amazing. And I realized that you can use media as a platform and a tool for change and to really encourage people to, you know, believe in a specific ideology. And I'm very strong-willed, and I have a lot of strong opinions. So I wanted to be a lawyer before, but then someone was like, oh, you have a good voice for radio. And I was like, oh, okay, I had a crush on the guy. You know, and once he told me that, I was like, Matias said I have a good voice for the radio. I must become a presenter. Um, and that's kind of what inspired me to kind of become go into media. And you've actually set the trail for a lot of people. You've done fantastic you. um, so far. Recent last year, you won the Future Awards yeah. Prize for <laughs> TV <laughs> on air personality visual. I was radio. <laughs> radio. Yeah. And you've gone and ha you have your on the on the carpet that you yeah. do with Bolinto, and you've done so much. What would you say has been your motivating factor? I personally know that there are days I don't want to come on TV. There are days I just want to snuggle. <laughs> what would you say has been your drive? Because I'm sure you get DMs every day of people telling you, I want to be a TV presenter, yeah, I yeah. want to be a radio presenter. So this is their shot. You know, I think it's interesting because I was this morning, I've been so emotional, I've just been crying all my tears of joy. Um, <laughs> just because, you know, for me, I realize that there's sometimes where you, you enter a specific profession and you know that this is what you're meant to do. Um, the adrenaline and the rush I get from being on set, it just clicks and it connects. Um, but most importantly, I really enjoy creating content and I enjoy using my creative side to you know, entertain people and to also just let people feel like they can get to know me. Um, I think people tell me I'm very approachable and I'm very relatable and you know, I'm the girl next door and I'm like, well, th because that's who I am. Like what you see on TV is what you see off set. Um, I mean, in traffic, if you hit me, you might see a different <laughs> side of me, but you know, um, I'm motivated by, I think, all of us, just seeing 
so many other young women, you know, like you, Olive, and Ayu, are just doing amazing things in the media um, industry. It really inspires me and it gingers me to want to continue to do well. Um, so, yeah. All right. Now, some people would describe 2017 as the year for Bolan Lake because you did <laughs> so many things. And looking at your Instagram, your yeah. social media, and you talk about um, the things that you wrote down and how you've achieved most of those things. Yeah. When you started out in 2017, let me just list some of your bigger, you know, some of your achievements. Apart from winning the Future Awards, which was a great start to 2017, Definitely. you also um, obviously continued doing your show, um, the yeah. um, Project Fame. You also um, your show is still successful moments, and then you um, got some deals with, on the carpet. Yeah. You know, you had some sponsorship deals Definitely. and you signed some major endorsement deals as well this year. Yeah. Um, more to come, hopefully. And then you went on a project, you know, that was um, not different from TV, but using your platform on TV yeah. to um, to promote a cause that many people talk about and just, you know, look at it with pity, but mm -hmm. don't do much about. Did you, how did you start out 2017? Yeah. Was it different from how you did other years? Because some people say they started with a goal and that's how they were able to achieve them. Looking back, what made 2017 different from you as a woman? Yeah, man, gosh, I'm getting so emotional because it's funny. I, I sit down and I think about it. 2016, December, I will never forget. And you know today is a year to last year when we won our Future Award. Oh, really? It's December 20th. Oh, wow. It is. It's a year Congratulations. To today. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting because I was thinking about that yesterday, how the premiere was yesterday. And I remember... That last year, December, I told myself, I was like, 2018, 2017 is going to be mad. Like, I just kept my saying, I was like, I'm going to kill the year. But it wasn't even that. It was that there was an epiphany moment where I felt like God was like, what have you done, like, with who you are as a person? Like, this thing that I've given you, this talent, this platform, what are you actually doing to help others? Yeah, people will say, oh, but you inspire me. Can, I, can you mentor me? How have you actually changed someone's life? And I remember sitting down in my room and saying, okay, I'm going to do some sort of community service. Um, and I, all I did was I called a woman who had been on our show and she was part of the self-worth organization, the center that I work with. And you know, she told me a little bit about what the widows go through. And she was like, oh, she wants to do a Christmas party. I was like, oh, okay, that's great. She's like, we'll buy rice, we'll buy oil for them. We'll say Merry Christmas. I said, no problem. You know, we did the Christmas party. I went for it um, and it was a great experience. And then I think it kind of hit me a light bulb moment where I was like, it's such a little thing, rice and oil. But the joy that it came, the way they prayed for me, you would have thought I bought them a car. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I think after that, I just told myself the whole year that I was going to be intentional about every single thing I did. Um, I had a 2017 workbook that I used, that I wrote down all of my goals. I wrote down a list of people that I admired, and I asked myself, what specific traits do I like about them? You know, and I was like, I'm going to emulate that. What traits do I not like about myself? Um, this year, I talked a little about anxiety. And I struggled a lot last year with anxiety and just frustration and stress. And anxiety, it sounds like it's just anxiety, but anxiety is to the point where you can't make a call because you're afraid that the person's going to say no. Mm. You know, so that's also fear of failure. And I think that's something that us who are overachievers deal with, yeah. but it makes me not do anything. So you're afraid of failing so that you don't do anything. Yeah. Then you become worse. an underachiever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I, every time I would feel afraid this year, because I was afraid, I would make sure I did it. So the, and I think God was really gracious to me because he wouldn't allow me to like do anything unless I'd make the call or unless I achieved my goal. Like every time it was just like, Balale, you've not achieved this goal. Balale, you've not <laughs> achieved this goal. And I had people around me who were also, I was accountable to. Um, people who just told me that, you know, it's fine if you fail, fail, you will learn from it. Um, so I think the three things I did was I really thought about what I wanted this year to mean to me and I wrote it down. And I also looked at other people that I admired and I tried to emulate, you know, as much as possible. I think these are very, very fantastic things you've done. And I've been able to pick a few things myself in preparation yes. sure for 2018. 2018 yeah. is about yeah. to be. It's, it's about yes. to be. Really I it. We're going to kill it. It's the double, I, my hashtag is the double greatness. Like, oh, that's man. it. 2017 was the year of slaying. 2018 <laughs> is double, double greatness. Double greatness. I like that. Let's I'm go straight sentence. to your project. Yeah. God's wise. <clears throat> Tell us about how it started and what it's about. Yeah, so, you know, again, last year in December, I really just wanted to start doing something for other people. And I've always been very passionate about community service. When I first moved back to Nigeria, I actually worked at an NGO for a year in Ikiti while I was doing NYSC, you know, and I lived in Ikiti for a whole year. I loved it. But I'd been doing it while I was in university all the time. You know, I'd always do community service. And I have a dual degree in communications and international studies. So I kind of had goals to be part of the UN, you know, do development work. But I think my other side of my passion, which is media, wanted was calling me. And that's why I decided to become a presenter. And I've always struggled with not being able to merge those two together. 
Um, I've always felt like being in the, in the front of the TV sometimes can be a bit narcissistic and it can be very self-promoting. And I always used to tell people, I'm like, how am I helping anyone else by sitting in front of TV? Like, what am I actually doing? And it came to me while I was working with the widows that I can tell their stories. I can merge content and I can merge my passion for helping other people in one. And that's how I started um, and produced a documentary, God's Wives. And, you know, people are like, how about what's up with the name? That's what God calls them. He says that, you know, he's the husband to the husbandless. Um, and I think that sometimes in life you realize, you, we don't realize how much someone else suffering is not just that they don't have money. It's the feeling of loneliness and being alone and not having anyone to advocate for you. You know, you were married and you've lost this person who was by your side. And society is not doing anything for you. We know how Nigeria is. There's no social services. And people are like, well, why did you decide to do it? I said, how about we become each other's social services? Us who are the elite, us who have, you know, more resources, us who have access to power. If we're each other, if we're social services to the people who are less privileged, Nigeria will be a better place. Yeah, um, and that's what's really important for All me. All right. We, this is amazing. It is emotional. <laughs> and um, we want to tr throw to your video. We have your okay. documentary. We have a trailer of documentary. So let's take a look at God's Wives and see what Bolanli Olukani has been up to. My mom came back, her eyes was red. And I asked her mom what happened. She said that. I said, did anything happen? She said something like that. I said, did my dad die? She said yes. My husband called me Inky. Whenever he's coming back, he said, Ink, Ink, I will know that my husband is coming back. I miss him a lot. of the rent, nobody. My husband, they are alive, but they don't have. Nobody to assist me. She collected the house. She threw everything down, said, I don't want you in my house. The foundation of the house, you have spoiled it. Everything more, please, can you leave? Mm, after the death of my dad, everything seems as if every, the world is, is turned around for us. That is very emotional, hat wrenching. I can connect to some of the stories yeah. because my mom was also a widow and I know what she went through. Um, going through this phase, up I wish now that I know now, mm. what, or I knew then what I know now, yeah. and I've been able to speak up for her. They're told to do several unimaginable things. And how's the response been so far? It's been so amazing. Like, I think that's also why I've been crying all morning because, like, a lot of people that have seen the documentary have just been like, Balali, how can we help? Um, because the documentary, I. For me, it's not just to tell someone's story. I'm asking myself, how can we change the lives of the people in that documentary? So we have so many different partnership programs um, that are the foundation had, that people can be involved with. You know, you can sponsor a widow. Um, you know, a lot of the widows are trying to move accommodation. You know, one of the women in that documentary, she lives in a room with her four children. Mm. A room. Literally, a room. That's it. And you sit down and you think about what you have and what it is that you can do for someone else. It's just something as small as 35,000 naira. And um, for me, it's about people being inspired to be part of this project. I've been doing this for almost you know, a year by myself. And I was like, if I tell people about it, then we'll do more together. And that's why I decided to start talking about it. Um, because I realized that I cannot do this by myself anymore. I need all of us to join forces so we can literally like transform the lives of these women. And that's the Wonderful. hope and the goal. Brilliant. Now, if people wanted to help or yeah. support what you're doing, how can people support? So you can go to um, www.godswives.org, and that's G-O-D-S-W-I-V-E-S.org. Mm. And you can also email info at balanleo.com. And if you hit me up on social media at Balanle or at Balanle Olukani, I will respond um, because I'm trying to make sure that we get as much help <laughs> as possible. Very true. You know, so All yeah. Right. Thank you guys so much. Thank Fantastic. You so much Thank, you. Thank you, Bolanli. Thank you. been such a, I don't even know, an inspirational, eye-opening, impactful interview. And Thank we haven't you. even scratched the surface because I wish we had a longer time yeah. to speak with you. But I'm sure we'll have you back again. Yes. Thank you very much, Bolanli. Thank Bolan you. And wish you all God, the best. Thanks, guys. We hope you get as much support as you deserve. Definitely. Support has been amazing already. Yes. Well done.